Eklo the Boss Voss is one of the new Mechanologist heroes from Bright Light, and his hero ability reads, you may play your evos from your banish zone, and once per turn instant, pay 3 to play your next evo this turn as though it were an instant, when you do, draw a card. So as you can tell, evos are a special mechanic, so we're going to have to explain what evos are. Evos are a Mechanologist action equipment card. So this means that there are equipment pieces that actually start in your deck rather than starting in play. And due to them being actions, this means we actually need to cast the card in order to equip them. And all of the evos require you to have a base piece equipped in order to transform that equipment into the upgraded evo version that you want to play. And each of these evos provide powerful unique abilities, massive block values, and or even upgrade the abilities on a lot of our other cards in our deck. So to to summarize real quickly what you want to be doing with Teclo the Boss Voss. First step is you want to equip four Evos as fast as possible and then second step is bully your opponent out of the game. So with that in mind let's get into how I decided to maximize these steps for myself and my deck list. So for step number one of our game plan which was setting up the four Evos there were some clear massive weaknesses that we needed to cover first. So the first weakness was that it's too slow to not do anything on our turn except for just play out an evo this is mainly because they don't have go again and if you just spend the first four turns of every single game playing out an evo you're just leaving your opponent with five card hands to just bomb you turn after turn after turn this often left you too low of life total to be able to turn the game around once you're fully equipped and then as for the second weakness there was just a little bit of an inconsistency problem with not being able to find all four of the right evos fast enough this was mainly a problem because you would find multiple of a single piece that you already have equipped, which is pretty useless. But with those weaknesses in mind, I actually was able to cover both of them by just running boost cards. And to explain, the boost attacks allowed us to keep up in the race early game while using the go again from them to equip evos at the same time. Then on top of that, due to our hero ability, if we banished an evo off of our boost, it essentially meant that we drew a card off of our already overstated cards, which is just straight up broken because a zero for four go again draw card should not be legal but not only did it do that for us but even when you don't banish an evo off of the boost they're still digging us one card closer towards our next one anyways so in that sense you really can't miss when you're boosting and then due to playing the boost this meant that we could play the cogworks base equipment which are not only just clear upgrades to the other base starting equipment options but the effects are all very relevant, especially the chess piece. So yeah, boost cards completely fixed the early game weakness of the boss by giving us that early game pressure that we needed with the high stat lines, the pure card advantage through drawing off of boosting, allow for better starting equipment, all while scaling into the late game at the same time. And so the boost to EVO ratio that I found most optimal is I've been running 27 boost attacks along with 20 EVOs. This makes it so we have a one in two chance of every draw that we make that that card be a boost card. And then every one in three cards that we boost is gonna draw us a card from banishing an EVO. And that's what I felt like is the most consistent so far, but that's it for step one of the game plan of setting up as fast as possible while trying not to fall too far behind. Now onto step two, which was bullying your opponent out of the game. And this step is actually the boss's main strength. The main reasons being Terminator tanks and war machines are each two card 12s with overpower on them, which is just actually insane. These two powerhouses of cards are easily able to close out any games through both damage and fatigue. And then when I get to this late game state, I use the blue and red Evo arms pieces to keep recurring the Terminators and war machines over and over until we successfully bully the opponent completely out. And since this is all the late game you actually need, we can take it pretty easy on the other late game powerhouse cards and instead use those spare slots to help the early game weakness that Teclo players really should address. But to quickly go over the other cards I run for the late game power is first off we have the weapon Teclo Leveler, which becomes a nice one cost three go again in the late game, which is actually a huge help because late game you'll often be left with five card hands 
hands. So having this weapon easily fixes all of your clunky draws that we might have, even though the boost already does fix that. But with that said, the Teclo Leveler also turns all of our two cost and one cost boosts, especially the blue ones, into way above right. So make sure you go to the Leveler. And then I also like to run Steel Street Enforcement because it's just a blue block five. If you see it too early, you can just use it as a blue pitch. So there's really no downside. I also chose to run the blue Liquid Cool Mayhems, which is just a blue zero for four in the late game really nice to end your chain off on that and then top all of that off with the one of singularity of course as our win the game card if we happen to draw into it and that's all you really need for your late game powerhouses and so with all that explained it's pretty safe to say Teclo Vosin has one of the best late games in flesh and blood just as long as we can make the early game consistent enough to allow us to reach this game state and then we shouldn't have any problem closing the game out from there so lastly for the deck tech we'll quickly go over my sideboard options of two fabricate, three firewall, two scrap trader, three sink below, three pulse wave protocol. I like swapping some of the red evos and a couple boost cards to bring in everything when I really want to fatigue my opponent. I'll do this against opponents that are weak to fatigue like rangers and mech decks or I'll just bring in the scrap traders and the fabricates for the more mid-rangey matchups or where I feel like my equipment might be threatened. So decks like Bravo, Dash and Assassins. Pulse waves can come in as extra poppers for illusionists and lastly i've got a couple ab pieces for the wizards and rune blades but with all that said i'll have the matchups tab sorted for you guys if you want to just check out the deck list below for yourselves and that's it for the deck tech so let's get into the game so right into it we're versing a bravo that made us go first our opener is pretty good with an evo piece and a couple zero cost boosters i decided to lead off by boosting even though it will let them mulligan I just think that the upside of boosting with this deck is just way too good in general. So we do that, we boost the 0 to 60 for 4, they double block it, I activate my chest piece with one of the reds in my hand, and use the two resources to develop an eco. Arsenal this other 0 cost, and we pass it over. So over to them, my hand is nice, we have the second evo piece and a blue to cast it, so just want to get back to my turn with those. So when the opponent swings in for 6 with CNC, I snap block with the two other reds in my hand, but unfortunate they had the pommel, so tough. Take 4, down to 36, destroy my arsenal and discard the blue card from hand. They pass it to us though with no arsenal, so not the end of the world. And then on our turn, I just arsenal that headpiece and then pass it back. So back to them, they have a 4 card hand and lead off with a CNC again. I swear to fucking god if they have the pommel again. But here's where I take an interesting line because I can actually activate Teclo in response and play out the Evo piece from Arsenal. So I do that and then we draw onto another blue which is big. So then here I have to decide if I want to value block here to save some life. I decided not to though because each of these cards in my hand can easily get more than 3 value here. Especially this 0 to 60. So I end up taking 6 all the way down to 30 already and then they pass it to us. Over on our turn always leading off with the booster. So 4 go again and then we boost into an Evo piece. So draw a card as well, massive. Lucky I didn't block with it. Opponent blocks it out. Then I just follow up with the Evo piece from Banish, putting us at our third piece already. And then we arsenal the fourth piece and pass it to them. So it's their turn again. They start off by activating Bravo, creating a seismic surge, and then swinging in with a disable for dominate on hit sinker arsenal. Dominate isn't real, so it can't hurt me. So I just block five all up with a card from hand and two from my arms piece to cover the crush. Then they just pass it to us. So over on our turn, gonna prioritize getting the fourth Evo out over playing the tank. Mainly because they have so much equipment block available, so the tank isn't going to do much right now. Plus, we'll have all the modes active on it after this fourth Evo as well. So we lead off with the Underloop, which is honestly one of the best boosters in the deck, as it presents a breakpoint on hit that is very relevant in this specific deck, since I can almost guarantee that we'll see that card again if it is allowed to hit. And opponent does let it hit, so they block three, taking one down to 39, sinking the Underloop. And then here's another reason why it's so good because it curves perfectly into the fourth evo piece from our arsenal for us we play that out arsenal the tank and pass it over so it's their turn now they play a buckle and then swing with anathos for seven dominate on hit it will destroy my arms too bad again my therapist told me dominate doesn't exist so block four with my equipment and give a card from hand to cover it all up easy peasy then they pass it to us. So we're fully mecked up right now and we even have a payoff in our arsenal. So it's bully time. I'm gonna lead off with a Teclo level of a three go again to try beta block, which the opponent falls for it. So they end up blocking it. Then a follow up with the tank for nine, overpower on hit discard. 
opponent has to put all the equipment in front along with a card from hand in order to cover it. So I'm happy to leave them on a two card hand while I arsenal this red throttle, pass it over. So we disrupted their turn hard enough that all they can do is swing hammer for four. Hammer for four. So my blocks may look wasted right now, but I'll break it down. My hand actually has a lot of options. You mostly want to look to boost plus play a blue evo when you have a five card hand. But with the banished evo legs, I actually have a six card hand. So you have to keep that in mind. So I'm actually able to play a boost and to either play my legs from banish with my hero ability or I can just play my headpiece from my hand. So the leg piece is actually going to draw me a card or the headpiece is going to give me intellect for a seven card hand in my next next turn. So I decide to block with my headpiece and my leg piece here for the value since I'm pretty certain I'm going to be upgrading one of them in the next turn. So might as well get the block while I can. Okay, so that was a lot of explaining to explain that I'm blocking for two on the hammer. So I take two down to 26. They arsenal and pass it to us. So over on ours, gonna lead off with the red throttle from Arsenal to see how they block and what we boost into. Opponent actually gives us two cards here. So since they block like that and their turn is probably already hurt as it is, I'm just gonna look to play the blue evo from hand and arsenal my red zipper to set up a seven card hand so we do that and then we pass it over and then over on theirs we disrupted the turn enough but they still get to play out the spicy crush down which is a dope card then they just arsenal and pass it back so looks like they're setting up for a big turn but we got back to ours with a seven card hand so just gonna lead off with the zipper for five boosting we don't hit an evo never lucky lol but the opponent takes five down to 34 so they definitely want to keep their hand so we follow up by active Activating the boss, then playing the blue legs from Banish, drawing into another blue, which is perfect. So now we get to level up for three, go again, into Terminator tank for nine, on hit discard, which they take all of it. So we ended up dealing 17 damage, which could have been 21 if I wanted to send the zero to 60 as well. We also reset our boots for another five to six block value from that. We also forced through some disruption on them and we still got to keep an arse. So this turn and the last turn are why this deck is so hard to evaluate because we actually just got 29 points of value across this turn. We got that across through damage, disruption, card advantage, and future block values. But goddamn, that felt good. So we arsenal, pass it over. So it's their turn now. The crush down triggers, and then their next guardian attack is plus six. Then they swing in with that new colossal bearing, which is on hit, destroying equipment with one or less toughness. So this is actually gonna kill my arms piece if it hits. And so I could block it out with my armor plus two cards from hand, but I'm not gonna lie, at the time I thought it had dominate. So whoops, my bad. But yeah, so <laughs> since I thought it had dominate and I thought I couldn't cover it up, I ended up just blocking with my arms piece because it was gonna die anyway. So I ended up taking 13 down to 13, but sadly the colossal is not coded in yet. So the on hit doesn't trigger and I got to keep my evo arms, but we talked it through and we continue to play since we can just manual mode fix the game states if the evo affects anything, but they end their turn and pass to us. Back to ours, good thing about thinking that the card had dominate is now I get to play another five card hand, smiley face. So we lead off with zero to 60 for four, opponent takes it down to 18. We follow up with a throttle for six, boosting our singularity sadly, but lucky it doesn't matter because technically my arms are dead. But they block five of that, take one down to 17. We follow up with a level of a three, which they snap take it. And then we just end on a blue throttle, which they take again, ending up on 10 HP at the end of it. Boost OP, we pass it over. So over on their turn, they're just gonna play out a three card hand crippling crush at us. No dominate and my hand kind of sucks. So just gonna block with these two one costs since I have no blues and cover the crush with my chest piece. Taking three down to 10 and they pass to us. Over on our turn, gonna level it for three go again, which the opponent blocks. Then we follow up with data link for three, boosting, even though I'm not gonna use that action point. Uh, we boost into an Evo and it hits. So the op shows us a red boost and I decide to keep that on top. So now they're on seven and I pass it over. Over on this, they just have another crush down into Arsenal turn and then instantly ship it back to us. Okay, so not bad. We get to try and take their whole hand here. So we lead off with the level again for three go again, which they block. Then we go dive through for four go again on hit opt. The opt shows another boost, so I'm just gonna keep it there. And then here I think if I wanna reset my chest or if I just wanna play my throttle at them. And at the time, playing the chest piece didn't feel very cash money, so I decided to just send a blue throttle for four, which they take down to two. 
putting them down to two is them in lethal range for overpower so we pass it to them then over on their turn they send in the e-strike for seven i have the overpower so i decided to just give the equipment and push for the win they pass it to us so on ours i lead off with the dive through for four go again on head opt which actually pulls the defense react out of them which is probably game winning then we follow up with the leveler for three go again, which they block again. Then we end off with the war machine for six overpower. So here, if they have the second react, they can live, but they don't. So GG's. So all up, Tekla the boss Voss is a fucking G deck. He has some really complicated lines due to the instant speed Evo things that you can do, along with some really unique ways of actually generating card advantage. And honestly, in game, it really does feel like you're slowly suiting up into a mech suit and then you turn into a straight up raid boss. So super fun. I'll leave the deck list in the description like always. Check that out for yourself. Comment down below which hero you want to see next and appreciate you for watching to the end. But I'm out. Peace.